Welcome back to another Inkscape tutorial. In this video, I want to talk a little bit more deeply about exporting your artwork uh, and some considerations for if you're creating artwork for print design or for web design and some of the different ways you'd go about exporting that. Um, I had a comment on the YouTube channel from Jim Kernicky and uh, he was asking about how to create a nice smaller file size for uploading to web pages. Uh, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that too, Jim. And so first, if we go to File and go to Export PNG, we know it brings up this dialog here. And um, I also had another comment. Uh, there was a lady asking about this. And because if you go to, if you dock it over here, you click this little icon, Iconify this dock. And then if we go to File, uh, Export PNG, it doesn't show up. So just be aware, and that's not only with the uh, export uh, tool, it's with any tool, our fill and stroke, our line and distribute. When we dockify something, it just appears on this little dock here and it can be kind of confusing, but that's how we get it to open if it's already open. And again, if it's not open, we go to File, Export PNG Image. Okay, so the settings for, for how we export our image are over here. We have our export area. If we set it to page, it works off of this black page outline, which isn't shown in our final file but it's going to export. And this one happens to be like, I think it's 1024 pixels by 1024 pixels. And so the actual image that will get uh, exported is going to be this 981 by 981 at 92 dpi. So what's going to affect our file size is going to be the width and the height and then also this dpi, dots per inch. It doesn't matter what units we're working in. In fact, if we change this to millimeters, change it to centimeters or pixels, it doesn't really matter. Uh, because this is always going to be in pixels. Our image size, our DPI is always pixels, and our width and height is always in pixels. Um, if we click on drawing, this is going to export whatever is drawn, whether it's within or outside of the page. If I push the minus key to zoom out a little bit, I can draw some stars over here. And now when we go to export, so if we export the drawing, it's going to take everything that's drawn, even if there's a teeny tiny little star out here. And if we go to export drawing, we see our size now is massive. It's 4,000 pixels by 4,000 pixels. So this is going to save to my desktop, and it's going to be called p.png. I'll hit export, and now that appears over here. And we see it's kind of large. It's um, a little more. It's like a than a. It's like a third of a megabyte. It's 364 kilobytes. And we can open that up and see it. Sure enough, exports the penguin down here with all the stars and this last star here. So it'll export whatever the limits of our drawing are, as opposed to page. If we just click page, and now we keep everything the same and hit export and replace, well, now this is what it looks like. Our final image is like this, and it's about half the size. It's 181 kilobytes because we exported just the page. Even though, look, our star over here is selected. We have our star selected. But if we go to export, it's going to still export just this picture of the penguin. That's because it's exporting the page, not the selection. If we want to export the, just this star, we click on Selection, and it'll export the star. Now if I just leave everything the same, well, it looks like it changed our path. So I might need to go in here and just make sure that I'm resaving over top of this and click Replace. Now it's the star, and that star is only 20.6 uh, kilobytes, even though it was roughly, I think it's about roughly the same size as the penguin. See. It's a lot smaller because it just has a lot less detail, not as many gradients, not as many uh, nodes and different points there. And so that's something to remember too. Your file size is going to depend on how complex your thing is. If we just select all three of these here and then we go to export, uh, selection, we'll see how large this is. So this is about twice the size to have all these in here, but it's still not very large at all, 44 kilobytes. So anything under a megabyte is going to be pretty good. Um, let me just tell you as a rule of thumb what I would recommend. If I was exporting this, I'm going to delete these stars. If I was going to export this penguin for a web page, I would select the whole thing. I would choose selection for my export options. I would set the pixels to this 92 dpi, which is what it is. And I would have the width and height to be no larger than 1920 um, in one direction. So this would be 1920 by 1980. That's still very, very large. In fact, what I'd probably do is go 1080 in one direction. And what that's going to do, if I just come over here and go to Save, Export, Replace. So now we have a nice large picture here. And we see if we, if we look at it full screen, it looks perfect for our screen because 
my screen right here is uh, 1920 pixels wide by 1080 pixels high. If we zoom in, it'll get a little bit grainy here, but it's not too bad because no one's really going to zoom in this far in a web page. In fact, the, this, it can probably get away with being a lot smaller than this. So rather than selecting it and trying to shrink it down like this, I'll just leave it. I don't care what size it is over here. I'll change the size on the image size over here, the export size. If I want it to just be like 512 by 512, or roughly, it's not completely square, and I'll change this to 92 dpi again. And now this will be a smaller file size and a, sm a smaller image without ever having to resize it over here on my canvas. So hit export, replace, and now it's half the size. It's kind of hard to see here, but now if we zoom in, it gets a little bit more grainy more quickly. Does that make sense? Let's say I wanted to print this, oh, and this file size right now is 183.7 kilobytes. So let's say I wanted to print this. I can leave it the same size. Again, select the whole thing. I, I almost always do this selection uh, export. Um, I, I don't usually do drawing. Drawing is very dangerous to do. I don't usually do custom. Uh, sometimes I'll do page. But if, if I wanted to print this, maybe on like a t-shirt or a business card or something, uh, or I wanted to import it into another program to print, I would set my DPI. Well, first I'd get the size that I want. I'd change this to, uh, well, it has to be pic pixels down here. I'd change it to inches. I might change my, my uh, units to inches over here. So maybe I would resize it here. Um, change the units to inches and maybe I want to print this on the side of a vehicle and I want it to be uh, I would lock this and I would I want it to be uh, 24 inches high and then however wide that would make it and I can move it over here it doesn't matter if I'm outside of my page bounds it doesn't matter if there's other objects drawn over here because with all of this selected then I will go to selection and now it's it's going to be uh, about 24 inches by 24 inches um, and I will change this to if you're printing it on your own on like your printer at home you do like 300 dpi if you're having a professional company print it um, you do 600 so maybe I do 600 dpi so this is going to be quite large if we export this it was 183 kilobytes before look how long it's taking to export this is just massive So it's taking a huge long time, which tells me I might have done something wrong. Let me pause the video and let this finish exporting. So this file that got created, um, it took about a minute to create, and it's 9.1 megabytes. Um, that's actually not too bad of a file. That's something that we could send to a printer. And even though it's a little bit large, they want it really large for their printer. They want as much data as they can get so that they can zoom in. And of course, with the vector graphics, if we zoom in, we never lose clarity while it's here in Inkscape. But once it's exported, we could zoom out, um, and we, um, I mean, we could zoom in, and it would start to get a little bit pixelated. We can see if we can open this file here. Let me open it with a different program. Um, let's open it in Darktable. Okay, so this is open here in Darktable, and we can see we can actually come in here and uh, click on it and look. So we can see this is the the actual PNG image, and if we zoom in here, it's very sharp. This is not an SVG, but it's just so incredibly sharp. When we scale, it gets pixelated, but that's just because we're moving around. That's related to a dark table. So we can see here, this is very large. This is, I think, 100%. This is, this is how far we can zoom in before it starts to get pixelated. Probably larger than you'd need unless you're printing on like a billboard or unless your printer asks for a huge, a huge, huge file. So that's just a little bit about um, how to keep your file sizes manageable. If you're doing print design, it's okay to have a large file. It's just a little bit cumbersome to work with, but you want that file to be quite large. I recommend doing 600 DPI when you're printing, unless you're printing at home on your printer. In that case, do 300 DPI. Uh, and then I would recommend doing, um, like I said, 92 for web. If you really want to get kind of like a very small file, you can do 72, between 92 and 72. Um, for that, and then your sizing. If it's going to be a little icon, a, a common size for icons is 256 by 256, um, or you can do like 512 by 512. Just you know, keep it in mind that the screen size is 1920 by 1080. So if you're designing something for a screen, you you rarely want to go above 1080, I, I don't think, or, or maybe 1920. But um, anyway, that's a little bit of consideration um, and how to reduce that file size. 
and I just recommend getting more comfortable. This confuses a lot of people, what you're exporting and then the units you're exporting in. Again, changing this here doesn't affect the units down here. This is always gonna be in pixels. So you might have to do a little bit of math on that in your head to figure things out. That's what I wanted to show you in this video. I realize a lot of that information is probably a repeat, but just get comfortable with this and um, hopefully that clarifies a little bit about exporting your artwork and getting it into other programs and uh, or printing. Uh, thanks for watching. Go ahead and leave your questions, comments below if you have any, and I'll catch you in the next video.